Fruit Best deck, new mechanic, new cards. Let's take a look at it all right now. What's up? Let's just jump into what we're looking at. So, we're going to jump straight into basically reveals in order of release, starting with Smokey. A 3-2 for one fire. When you special cast this Smokey, you can draw two cards. That's awesome. How are you special casting this Smokey out without Rise from the Ashes? Basically, we have Exalt Flare and the next card we're going to look at. So before we look at it, we're just going to talk about Smokey and special cast triggers here. There's nothing that floats into this. There's nothing that really gets it out of the deck. So it's got to be in your hand, first and foremost, to special cast it, or you can rise from the ashes it. Paying four to draw two, we already know, is not a good enough rate when Nog has paid two draw two, and it's a two card combo. So I don't see it being there. However, this is likely going to be an extender in a two drop focused fire deck. Why is it an extender in a two drop focused fire deck? And that's going to be because of Caperfume. So Cap Fumes a 5-4 for 2 fire. This Cap Fume gets 2 attack for every fire lustral on the field and includes itself, so it's basically a 7 attack if it's correctly enchanted. You can expend fire in order to special cast a 1 spirit fire lustral from your hand. So this is what you're going to use to special cast Smokey. Your other targets or cards you want to special cast with Cap Fume, there's not a ton of them. I mean, you can use Netcraft to go wider, uh, Kinleo, but you're still going to want to bank to get Kinleo to Nexus with, so... Cap Fume might enable a few things, and the reason I say is Smokey's kind of an extender here because Cap Fume is going to pretty much empty your hand really fast, and you're not. And if you're just dumping Lushals into play, then you don't have runes. So Smokey is an option to kind of dump cards into play and get refueled from Cap Fume effect. So there's some nice synergy there. You could also potentially Exalt Flare, Cap Fume, or Smokey out. Like if you have Exalt Flare. Cap Perfume, Smokey, and like Hephaestus in your hand. Well, now you can go Exalt Flare, Special Cap Perfume, Special Smokey off Cap Perfume, draw a bunch of cards, and kind of refill your hand from that combo. I don't know how good this is going to be. I mean, you can negate the ability still. It's got okay attack stats, but if you suppress its attack stat, it's just a five attacker. I don't see this being super good. It's a super cool card, and I can see a lot of places where you can kind of go fire wide with this if you can get into play. It's kind of like Giga Flora, where it's threatening because it's going to churn out a bunch of stuff, but it's not as... It's pros to Giga Floor, you can do it the turn it comes into play. Cons, it's not free. So you can... This really kind of... And it's also from hand. So it kind of gives Fire more aggressive wide options in a 2-drop slot. Fire needs good 2-drops to go with Exalt Flare. And this, I think, is good enough 2-drop. I just don't know how good that strategy is going to be for Fire because it... He does get costly expending spirits to special cast one drops and not only does it get costly on your spirits it can get really costly on your cards in hand you're just going to drop like three or four cards and then all of a sudden you comboed off but you have nothing in your hand to keep going unless you drew the smoky and nogs and then you're burning yourself i think it's just a little too expensive to really pop off but it's cool cards nonetheless i think smoky is a card that also in the future might get really good if we have something that can float into it or Oh, more ways to special cast fire one drops. Moving on. Poison Nectar. One cost counter rune. This Poison Nectar can only be cast when an opponent activates a card effect that draws a card. Negate that effect and destroy that card. Big thing to first note here. This does not hit Astrabbit. Astrabbit does not draw cards. It adds cards to your hand from the deck. Nuance, yes, but... Astrab is basically a, a search card, not a draw card, so this doesn't affect Rumma Gem, Astrabbit, and the likes of those. It does affect things like Smokey, like Drataya is probably the biggest hit for this card. Nectar of the Gods, I mean, it's Poison Nectar right there, right? Cards that draw, right? Circle of the Sky, I guess, it could also hit, but it's going to be a silver bullet. It's only going to really see play in the sideboard. It's really good at what it does. It's really cheap and efficient. It's just... Not something you're probably putting in your main deck ever, unless draw is like super ubiquitous down the line. But it's a good card. It's just, again, it's super sil super niche, silver bullet, put in your side deck. If your opponent's playing Fruit, or if your opponent's playing, uh, I don't even know, Smoky or something, right? Just lots of draw power. Like, sure, Poison Nectar is a good kind of gotcha card. You know, you hit a, hit a Nectar Gods with this, it's a one cause burn two in a sense. Um, 
Good card, not going to see a ton of play. Main deck might see some play here and there in the sideboard. Tadflow, a 1-1 one, one for 1 Frost. You can expend 1 Frost in order to special send this Tadflow to an Elestral with enchantment cost 1 or 2 from your hand. This is really interesting. So it's kind of like Tadpuff, except you have to put it into play first and then use its ability. Which, okay, Tadpuff's already doing that anyway, but it also locks it to Frost. So it's worse than Tadpuff. However, Frost has more ways to take advantage of this. Perhaps you go Tadflow, special cast something from your hand, and Frost sticks Tadflow back into play, do it again, Keone and Frost sticks back to your hand, and Frost sticks Tadflow, do it again. So I think this is another kind of enabler in that like Frost super go wide strategy with little things, or a way to kind of make maybe a Frost two cost combo deck work where you can get a bunch of two costs into play really quickly with M Frost sticks and Keone. It's a weird combo extender tool. I don't know how relevant it's going to be. We need to see more Frost 2 drops that are worth playing outside of Iowilly. I don't even know if Iowilly is worth playing. And if you're using this for one cost, yeah, you're basically tad puffing out one cost. But then to reuse it in an M Frost combo is kind of clunky and slow. Uh, I don't know. It's, if it sees play, it's going to be some kind of weird combo or like enabler. We'll see what happens as it goes on. I don't see it seeing a ton of play though. Moving on, Permfrog. Two cost Frost, one three. Really low stats for two drop. However, Alessios cannot attack unless they are Frost Enchanted or Fire Enchanted. During your opponent's end phase, you must either expend Frost or destroy this Permafrog. I think this card reads crazy. And when you look at future decks, we're gonna have eight elements, not six. So it hits 75% of decks in theory, but a lot of people splash spirits from other cards. So if it's worth splashing a frost or fire card, then you're always going to have those spirits available to deal with permafrog. And permafrog effectively does nothing if you're not if you're going up as a deck that basically is frost or fire viable. So I think this is a sideboard all-star where you go okay my i saw my opponent's spirit deck they had no frost or fire let me splash permafrog in against their aggro deck that's in i don't know maybe in the future like solar wind or something or solar earth or earth water and they don't have access to frost and fire this is a great card otherwise this card's horrible and does nothing if they have access to frost and fire i think it's a good balance spot you know it's complete attack negation for one spirit a turn against very specific decks. Will that be relevant? Probably more so in the future. Again, I think this is a good side deck card for certain matchups, or if the meta is, you know, Earth Beaters. They don't run any Fire or Frost. Maybe they will going forward, but right now they don't. There's no Fire in Earth Beaters Spirit deck. It's already pretty niche, so this is a great card against that. Mm, you know, it's a good card against Thunder Nexus. They don't run Frost or Fire, at least not yet. So I think it's a good card for specific matchups. Again, sideboard, probably all-star. Otherwise, I don't see this scene play much either. And last but not least, obviously this is my favorite card, Ambrosia Cornucopia. So let's start with titles first before we get to this card. This card's name is Ambrosia, but since it has a title, you can run both the original Ambrosia times three, and this times three for a total of six Ambrosia in your deck, as long as you have three of this one and three of the existing Ambrosia. That's how titles work. This is a unique named card. It does not take up slots, kind of like how Charcoon took slots from Syracuse. This does not take slots from Ambrosia. You can run both in your deck, and you're going to want to run both in your deck with this card because it's a two cost invoke rune for Earth. Draw a card, then return any number of spirits from your underworld to your spirit deck to the number of Ambrosia in your underworld. So if you have no Ambrosia in your underworld when you cast this, you'll just cycle a card, you'll draw one. Because it doesn't count itself as resolution, it's not in the underworld yet. Then if you have two Ambrosia, it's a draw one, refund one. So it's a one cost drawn one. If you have three Ambrosia in your underworld, it'll refund it. It'll give one spirit and draw a card. So this card is honestly kind of bad. At face value, most cases when you're playing it, it's going to be a two cost draw one. Maybe a one cost draw one. You're going to have to play this in a fruit deck to get 
full value out of it because I don't see it being viable in other decks. I think it's because you need to either draw the other Ambrosia first or get some other advantage out of this card to play it correctly. So you either you have your tie in play and this is a two cost draw three. Sounds great. Lottagon in play, this is Earthquake that cycles itself. Uh, Lottagon in play and two Ambrosia in your underworld, it's a free Earthquake that cycles itself. So it's a really good card in Fruit. Outside of Fruit, where if you're just running this and three Ambrosias as like a heal package, I don't think it's good enough. It's going to be a dead card in your hand until you get the other Ambrosias going. Or find ways to just pitch these into your underworld. So good card in Fruit. I think it's going to make Fruit way better. I think it's going to be allowing Fruit to cut back on the apples to maybe one or two. Because you'd rather just run these over Apple because it cycles itself, gets you some recovery late game as well. Best case scenario, this is a basically recover three, draw two, because you're recovering five. And it's uh, spirit fixing in a late game scenario at that point as well. You could potentially play like a super defensive counter rune deck with this, where you play like Jotaya this and you're cycling through to just get a bunch of counter runes in play to control the board that way and removal cards and stuff. A lot of things you can do with it, but you need to have at least your tie in your deck to make this work. And I think that's a great design. Like, uh, I know I designed some cards for Frostfall and I did a video about that. I did not design this card. Uh, this was pitched by somebody else and Dan loved it. And yeah, here it is. And it was not me. I promise. I didn't make this card. I wish I did. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great card. Awesome. And uh, that's going to be about it for today. Day. that's all the spoilers i have we're going to move on to other spoilers later this week and then i'm going on vacation so i may not have a video out for a little bit we'll see i'll talk to you guys later like subscribe etc and i'll see you guys in the next one